GTN Radio. Hear the difference. Examining the events that impact and shape China and the rest of the world. This is the Beijing Hour. One hour of news and information brought to you every weekday. Now here's your host. So we with you on this Monday, October 10th, 2022. You're listening to the Beijing Hour live from the Chinese capital. On today's program, explosions have rocked several Ukrainian cities. Japan has had to lift the COVID restrictions. China's second space station lab module are loaded with propellant for launch. In business, China's logistics sector is regaining momentum. In sports, China claims the title in men's team for the 10th straight time at the table tennis worlds. In culture and entertainment, one of Latin America's largest book fairs is now underway in Mexico City. Now today's top stories. Multiple explosions have rocked the Ukrainian capital Kiev as well as the cities of Lviv, Ternopil and Dnipro. Local media has reported casualties. Trent Murray has more. Well, I'm speaking right now from one of many bomb shelters within the Ukrainian capital, and that is because uh, just after around 8 a.m. local time, a barrage of Russian rockets began raining down on this city. Now, we have had confirmed locations for those strikes have included an opera theatre, a children's playground and a university. Clearly, they are not military targets. We understand it is part of a major barrage of Russian rockets, not just here in the Ukrainian capital, but right across the country. Um, I'm speaking in a t-shirt because like many Ukrainians this morning, I was out uh, on a busy Monday morning. I was out for a jog uh, when those Russian rockets began raining down. I had to run to this bomb shelter. Thankfully, was able to meet up with my team here. And that is why I'm able to speak to you right now using a mobile phone. But it certainly has been a very terrifying experience for Ukrainians. Of course, the capital here has not been really targeted before in this war. Uh, it has been long away from the front line, but clearly this morning uh, the Russian leadership has decided to launch these rockets at civilian targets. And the military here is saying uh, that these uh, are still working through rubble and are trying to find survivors in various cities. Uh, clearly a major escalation and it is just average people that are bearing the brunt of it. That was Trent Murray reporting. The blast in Ukraine happened one day after Russian President Vladimir Putin accused Kiev of orchestrating an explosion on a crucial bridge linking Crimea to Russia across the Kerch Strait. He called it an act of terrorism. Stor Smith reports from Moscow. Comments came when the Russian President Vladimir Putin over the weekend spoke with the man in charge of the investigation into what happened. Now, upon hearing the report, the President said it was quite obvious that from the evidence found by Russia's investigative committee that he believes this is a terrorist attack, firstly aimed at destroying the critically important civilian infrastructure of the Russian Federation, but also that it was clearly organized, carried out and ordered by the Ukrainian special services. That bridge does indeed take transport from Crimea to Russia and Russia to Crimea. It's tourist transport, but it is also an important railway link for supplying the southern front of Russia's armed forces and military trains do frequently cross over that bridge. Now, the head of the investigative committee says that he believes uh, citizens from Russia and foreign countries were involved in the carrying out of that attack on the bridge. He suggested that the truck, which Russia believes was responsible for the blast, drove through Bulgaria, Georgia, Armenia, North Ossetia, and then into Russia. And that's how it managed to get to the Russian side to cross towards the Ukrainian side. And although it seems it was searched, that the explosives were not found. That was Stor Smith reporting. North Korea says its leader Kim Jong-un has guided recent exercises by nuclear tactic cooperation units. The state's official news agency KCNA said a move was in response to large-scale Navy drills by South Korean and U.S. forces. He added that over the past two weeks, the country carried out exercises involving ballistic missiles with mock nuclear warheads targeting enemy airfields and key ports. Pyongyang also fired two ballistic missiles early on Sunday, making it a seventh such launch since September 25th. Jack Burton has more. 
According to media, they ran from the 25th of last month to the 9th of this month, coinciding and countering, uh, they claim, the large-scale U.S., South Korea and, at sometimes Japan, joint military exercises and were personally overseen by Kim Jong-un, according to the state media. Uh, it involved firing a wide range of missiles. One of them you just mentioned, that intermediate-range missile, it flew 4,500 kilometers and passed right over Japan, prompting that uh, warning for citizens on Hokkaido to take shelter, but also a lot of different types of weapons. We're also told there was exercises to arm missiles with dummy nuclear warheads at a silo that has been made underneath a reservoir in the northwest of the country. And on top of that, there were more conventional drills, like long-range artillery, sort of doing dummy attacks on South Korean ports and infrastructure. And also we saw large-scale aviation drills, including, according to the state media, the first time that 150 fighter jets have scrambled at the same time. And in response to that, South Korea scrambled its F-35 radar evading jets at the is their first real mobilization and at one point we saw 12 dprk fighter jets coming right up to the demarcation line uh, separating north and south and 30 south korean uh, fighter jets heading off there in the, you know of course what could be a sort of a dangerous and risky confrontation in the sky Lots of harsh language again, you know, talking about preemptive, the uh, possibility of preemptive use of nuclear weapons. But perhaps the good take out from this is in talking about the drills, Kim Jong un via state media saying it's all about deterrence and counterattacks. They're not talking about preemptively using those weapons. The bad news, perhaps, it's all about tactical nuclear weapons and their use. And of course, the expectation here is there will be a tactical nuclear bomb test, a seventh nuclear bomb test sometime soon. And Kim Jong-un's comments seeming to reinforce uh, this view. Now with Jack Barton reporting. Malaysian Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob has dissolved the country's parliament, paving the way for a national election. He made the announcement a day after he met with the king, Sultan Abdullah, who gave his consent. Speaking in a televised address, the Malaysian Prime Minister said the election commission will announce the date for the vote. An election has to be held within 60 days of the dissolution of parliament. Ismail's announcement follows the pressure from some in his ruling coalition to hold an early vote to gain a stronger mandate. Meantime, many lawmakers from his ruling alliance and the opposition have warned against holding elections this year due to the anticipated floods. Malaysia was not to do to hold a national election until September 2023. Coming up, Japan is set to lift COVID restrictions.